What's going on, y'all? It's Rob with Cinema Bullies. Um, I had uh, somebody drop a question in my inbox on regards to breeding dogs with kink tails. Um, believe it or not, a lot of these big star, you know, people or big name people in this game have some of their big studs or you know bad females um they have king tails i mean they can lie and say they don't or you know make them an excuse that the dog's tail got stuck in the door and got slammed in the door or you know it got stepped on when it was a puppy or you know whatever the case might be but some of these dogs have king tails it is i mean it comes with the territory with you know how this blood was created and how you know a lot of people just don't care about breeding that kink tail into the into the breed um i personally um use dogs or a dog with a kink tail um some people that watch this video will know who it is and um i've had two litters off of him one litter had zero kinks um out of eight puppies and then one or six puppies i'm sorry six puppies and one litter had only two puppies and both of them had kinks but the bloodline from the female was uh heavy miyagi so it had that you know possibility of getting some kink tails anyway from you know the lineage of the mother's pedigree also also she was heavy muscle tone um you know some of that muscle tone blood got some kink you know tails and stuff like that also so he asked me, is using a kink tail dog good for a breeding tool to, you know, better their program? And, um, you know, my answer was, I've done it. Um, do I agree with my decision? Um, yes and no. Because, um, you know, that dog might be perfect, you know, besides that kink tail. And, you know take the risk i mean sometimes you can take the risk and you know come up with zero kinks like i did a sick puppy zero kinks now the only problem with this is that that genetic trait of the kink tail can stay present up to you know i'm gonna say about five generations deep into that dog's you know further lineage of its puppies so it would take a, like anywhere from five, maybe six generations to get that kink tail gene, you know, out of the gene pool for, you know, your program. So is it worth it? Nah, probably more so not because, you know, if you're trying to breed show quality dogs, I mean, a dog with a short kink tail ain't going to do good in the ring. Um, I brought my male off the one litter into the ring which you guys know him is uh cinema bullies obsidian and he has a kink tail and it's short but it's a straight kink tail but it is kinked and short so he didn't do well i mean was he the best dog in the ring no but was he impressive does he have impressive features absolutely I mean, he is a specimen of a dog, being only a you know a year and two months old when I brought him in the ring, you know, with a 23 inch head, you know, 24, 25 inch neck, forearms that are almost as big as mine, and you know, crazy straight feet, great angulation, top line's good, but he does have a king tail. Now. Personally, I would breed him to dogs that do not carry that kink tail gene. So to get that kink tail gene out of the gene pool, you know, you want to try to breed to the most correct dogs as possible up to, you know, five, six generations. So eventually, hopefully, that gene will get kicked out of the gene pool when it comes to the kink tails. And that's what I told the guy that hit me up asking me about it. You know, um, if I could go back, would I do the same thing that I did bringing a dog, you know, knowingly that, you know, the king tails, I didn't fully understand. 
at the time that, you know, the King Tails was, you know, uh, uh, a big deal in the show ring. I mean, because there's, you know, there's plenty of dogs that I'm sure that are champions and even grand champions that have King Tails. But it might be a straight King Tail, so you don't see the kinks. And the only way that you don't know is by grabbing the dog's tail and feeling it, which most owners ain't going to let you do. They ain't going to let you touch their dog like that. So you won't know. But um, back to, um, you know, do I agree with the King Tail uh, breeding? Um, like I said, I'm 50-50 with it. I believe that, you know, if that's the only thing that's wrong with the dog, you know, take the risk. If there's more stuff wrong with the dog other than a kink tail, I probably wouldn't do, I wouldn't breed that dog. Like if the dog has, you know, weak pastures or stiff stifles or an underbite, um, hip dysplasia or like some other defect, I mean, you shouldn't be breeding that dog anyway. But I mean, if that dog had anything like that on top of having a kink tail, I would spay or neuter the dog and put it in a pet home. And that's just me. I mean, everyone has their own opinions and, you know, has different views on the subject. And I know plenty of breeders that will say, oh, hell yeah, I'll use a dog with a kink tail because, you know, they don't give a shit. I mean, as long as the dog looks nice, besides that, they're going to use it. You know, my thing is, why don't you just use a dog that looks like the dog and doesn't have the kink gene in the gene pool? You know, you can do that, too. But, you know, people make certain deals and certain have certain friends with these dogs that, you know, just charge them a putt back and they do the deal. And that's pretty much what I did. And that's because I was new, newer to this, you know, bully world. And like I said, all of, everything off my channel and everything I'm speaking on is from personal experiences and knowledge obtained from my experiences and a good amount of research that I've done, you know, for the past four or five years. So, you know, you can go off of what I'm telling you, or you can listen to the next guy. It don't matter to me either way. But I'm telling you what I know for a fact, not just made up or not just he said, she said, you know, BS. I mean, this is stuff that I've witnessed, that I've researched, that I've experienced. So, hope this helps you, uh, you know, on the dilemma of using a kink tail dog and not doing it. And, um, you know, hopefully people make the better decision and don't breed to a kink tail dog. Um, especially if it has something else wrong with it. I mean, if it's a bad dog and it has a kink tail, you know, like I said, I'm 50-50 with it. If it's going to benefit my program, if it's a dog that has a wow factor and is perfect with everything else other than the kink tail, which the dog that I did breed to pretty much was perfect besides the kink tail. And I took the risk. So, like I said, I had a whole litter with no kinks, had a litter with half kinks, and or all kinks, both, both males out of the litter of two had kinks. But that's because the mother also had lineage of kink tails. So it's better to stray away from that, you know, try to not do it. But, you know, I can't tell you what to do. Everybody that's watching this channel is a grown man or a grown woman. Make your decisions and, you know, be prepared for the re repercussions, you know, of getting a whole litter of kinks or half kinks or, you know, because they're puppies that are going to be pet home dogs that you ain't going to get as much money for. And you're wasting your time if that's what you're in it for, you know. But like I said, I'm in it for it. The better the breed, um, I will use my own dogs in my program, but I will not reach out of my program to use a dog with a kink tail or some type of genetic defect that I do not like. So, like I said, I hope this uh, helps you guys out. You know, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me how you feel about it, you know, in the comments. And if you agree, disagree, you know, have mixed feelings about it, I ain't here to judge you. Like I said, we're, you know, we all make mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. And that's the, honestly the best way you learn is from trial, error, failure. So, like I said, hope this guy, hope this helped you guys out. So, let me know how you guys uh, 
what your view is on it. All right, take care. Later.